Hey guys, this is Market Update. The bull market sentiment is back on. And the next 12 months, the fundamental outlook is really positive for risk assets, in my opinion. I'm gonna go through that in this video. The cycle is playing out and we've got a long way to go in terms of price appreciation for BTC and crypto is gonna follow, in my opinion. So I'll go through that in this video. So we've bounced from this support level here. Germany are out of their Bitcoin right now. So that narrative, that kind of FUD narrative that we had for a while, completely wiped out by kind of events that have happened over the last few days. Um, and obviously, now that people are very certain about what's going to happen in the elections in the US, we can start to price in all of that. And that's fundamentally very positive for risk assets. Uh, and I'll explain that in this video. But we're back already. We've recovered up into this support zone. You can see this green zone here, this kind of consolidation, support and resistance zone, a lot of trade around here. But the market uh, thinks now that the next you know, few years is going to be pretty positive for risk assets and certainly for crypto um, because the whole sentiment around crypto is going to change in the in the States. So very, very positive fundamental outlook for BTC. If you do trade, check out Bybit. The link in the description can get you a $30,000 deposit bonus. Um, so check the details via the link down below. I think we've got a big catch up trade to do now because the whole FUD around Germany selling, again, one of those completely irrelevant times in the market where just short term, someone's selling who cares right the fundamentals are really positive here you can see we went from one of the best performing cycles to one of the worst so a catch-up trade i think um, is in store right now and we know that the fed is starting to talk pretty easy and you know it's pretty much nailed on for a september uh, rate cut to kind of start rate cuts here looks like inflation is coming down to their target they're starting to be soft so it doesn't matter what inflation does it matters what the fed wants to happen and they're becoming soft soft fed good for btc you can see that here the bull market the next three to five hundred days is usually the big bull market and everything is lining up for it in terms of positive crypto sentiment in the states weaker fed uh, refinancing of the debts it's all right here you can also see this is uh, global liquidity as well just starting to bounce now, when that bounces, these are bull markets for BTC. You can see that each time this white line, which is the big four central banks balance sheets, each time that starts to tick up, uh, that's a bull market for BTC. We obviously got the big one last time, big drawdown for the bear market. Uh, and obviously we believe, I believe this is going to just tick up even to normal levels is very, very good for BTC. We also had that big kind of minor capitulation, which always happens around halvings as well. We got that, as you can see. So we had Germany selling, Bitcoin's, uh, you know, miners selling, a lot of FUD around that, but it doesn't matter because that's short term. What you can see here is that this minor capitulation seems to actually um, be drying up right now as well. Now, if the price rises a little bit, you then get this positive feedback loop of miners thinking, I don't need to sell as many or, you know, we can start to not sell to pay any costs. And so uh, they don't sell, then less Bitcoin in the market, price going up, and then you get FOMO. So everything's lining up perfectly. That was a great 30% pullback in the bull market, which you get, but the bull market is carrying on. Politics aside, it actually doesn't matter who's in charge, left or right. Neither candidate and neither party has any real desire or plan to stop fiscal deficits. So the government, you know, borrowing to pay its outlays, it cannot pay for those. It cannot pay for those. So these deficits will continue. That's bullish for risk assets. It's not really great news for people generally, the economy, people within that economy, it's not good news. But risk assets will continue to price that and go higher. So you must defend yourself out of that system and be in assets. I think Bitcoin is a purest play. Other assets, S&P, NASDAQ can also work, a lot of other uh, assets as well. Fiscal deficit will continue. There is no plan to stop this. And so as that happens, Risk assets go higher as stimulus pours into the economy. Eventually, they do have to be monetized in some way uh, through the central bank printing money. Now, interestingly, you have leaders like this coming out and saying, fiscal deficits are too high. We need to grow out of the problem. I'll link this video below. Uh, but really, the one word in this is growth. Growth, 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 growth. Growth is not going to come from tax cuts. And we need to be growing out of this. We need to grow. Help the growth, which should therefore lower the deficit. Unfortunately, the more that you incentivize growth, what you're actually doing is incentivizing the free market to disinflate the price level of everything. Not one single company in the market, in the world, 
is trying to invent ways to make things more expensive or to make things with higher costs, with more human capital and more human labor in. Every single thing we do as humans is designed to reduce the amount of cost and labor that goes into something that we create. You can see that this is the free market and this is what it does. The free market left to its own devices will reduce the cost of things that we want. You can see that here, cell phone services, computers, TVs, right? The quality of TVs and the cost of them come down and down and down because the free market is let to do its thing. Everything that the government sticks its nose in and tries to control for various reasons goes up. Housing, college tuition fees, healthcare, food. This is the free market not being able to do its thing. What Larry Fink says at the end of this video literally encapsulates the problem that we have with the fiat currency system. And after a seven minute video talking about growth, 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 and more investment opportunity, he says it in this video. We had 160 base points in margin increase, so which, which tells you we have $2 trillion more in assets today than we did a year ago and the same amount of employees. Okay, two trillion dollars more in assets, the same amount of employees. That is technology at work. That's technology at work. He's literally explaining the problem and boasting about it in this video, which is he as an entrepreneur in his business and every other business in the world, the only thing we do is try to produce more with less. We, we try to disinflate the price of goods and services. We try to remove labor, but you cannot price that in in a debt-based system, right? So what we have to do is we have to co-opt the free market and we have to push the price of everything higher, including housing and including wages through college tuition fees. Because what you do is you raise the, uh, the price of college tuition, you put everyone in debt, and that means that the price, the price level of wages has to go up to compensate from that. And so that is what is happening in society is that we are having to find ways to co-opt the free market and force prices higher to try and make debt cheaper over time. Now, this is just the way it is and it's not going to stop. You can see back to the 50s, we're running deficits, we're printing money, it just happens over and over again. We can't let the free market disinflate the prices of all the stuff that we have this huge leverage on, like houses, etc., and our wages. Wages never go down, they just disinflate, buying less over time. And so this is why Bitcoin is the only way to actually price this in because it's a neutral currency. So there's two ways that it actually you know, helps us. The first one is that it can accurately price in disinflation in goods and services because a good or service, if you have one Bitcoin, it will buy you X amount now. And in five years time, it will buy you more stuff. So things get cheaper in Bitcoin. You can actually allow for things to get cheaper over time in the amount of Bitcoin that you have because it's a neutral currency, it's not a debt-based currency. The other thing is, as currencies inflate, which they always do, these are fiscal deficits which often get monetized through the central bank printing money and increasing money supply, but the fiat currency system is an expanding system anyway. It's a debt-based system where you have more currency units over time and a neutral currency can price that in. So if you have currency debasement, you can price in that currency debasement with the neutral currency. So over time, this is the only savings tool that actually makes sense. Bitcoin isn't the only way to make investment returns though. The S&P makes investment returns. The NASDAQ makes better investment returns because it invests in technology. If you're investing in the assets that are growing their cash flows and revenues and trying to disinflate prices faster than everyone else, they also do pretty well in terms of their share prices, etc. But Bitcoin is a perfect mix right now and we're going to get this opportunity once it's a perfect mix of this huge revolutionary thing this worldwide asset it can be very very large right it has longevity but it also has a big growth story over the next decade 15 years right and so other assets like the nasdaq they're, they're, they're mature right and so they're not going to outperform btc over the next decade if btc continues its growth right at a natural level if they both continue their growth rates Bitcoin will outperform because it has a higher growth rate because it's fairly new, but it also as an asset has that longevity, right? So you see all these billionaires investing in it, right? Michael Dell, Michael Saylor, uh, Elon Musk, they get it, right? Those people get it and it's a big asset 
that has longevity, but also has that growth rate right now that it's not going to have forever. It's like a great mix. It is the trade of our generation. There's nothing else, right? Yes, you can invest in technology and there's going to be a lot of individual things that outperform BTC. But as a mix, it's literally uh, in the sweet zone right now. Something that could be extremely large worldwide, has a lot of growth left, large liquid, but still actually fairly small in the big scheme of things and being brought on institutionally. So that's why BTC, again, with BTC, it's an investment, it's a savings tool. It's not really a speculation as such, because in 10 years time, I can see a world where Bitcoin is still very successful and these meme coins, etc., are nowhere to be seen. But I can't see a world where meme coins are very successful and Bitcoin is nowhere to be seen. It just doesn't make sense to me. So even though many meme coins are going to outperform Bitcoin in one cycle, it's a speculation and not a savings tool. That's where I see things. Bitcoin is this sweet spot investment. Uh, I think it's the trade of our generation. More growth, more investment, more disinflation in prices is a great thing. If you own a currency, that can price that disinflation in. And if you're in a fiat currency, you're going to get wrecked. But we all know that because they've been getting wrecked literally since they've been invented. They only go down in purchasing power. So Bitcoin as the savings tool, investments that can outperform it as speculations over time. And we're in the middle of a bull market where we're going to start to price all of that in again uh, for the next 12 months, in my opinion. If you want to trade on Bybit, check the $30,000 deposit bonus down in the description. Crypto Investor course as well down there. If you want to get involved, there's private Discord groups. You can come and ask me questions. I'm James of Manzy G. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.